Will you join me this morning by taking your Bibles and turning to Revelation chapter 16 as we continue to make our way verse by verse through the Lord's wonderful revelation, the consummation of all things and the establishment of his glorious kingdom. It's sad that there's so much ignorance as well as indifference these days when it comes to Bible prophecy. And I'm thankful that you are here and others are listening who are not only intrigued with these things, but have a sincere desire to understand what the Lord has revealed. The Apostle Paul tells us that the mystery of lawlessness is already at work in 2 Thessalonians 2. And certainly it is at work right now in our culture, in our world. But dear friends, it is gaining pace. It is increasing. And we see that this momentum to oppose God is going to increase until the Lord comes again. This morning is the second in a two-part series on the last seven plagues that we have here in Revelation 16. May I remind you that the first four that we studied last week targeted men directly through malignant sores that came upon them as well as plagues that came upon the ecosystems of the world. We know that not only did men have these loathsome and malignant sores, but also the oceans, we are told, will be turned into a toxic, putrid pool of death. All the marine life will die. And also the same fate will befall the fresh waters of the world. And men will also be scorched with fierce heat from the sun, which you might say proves that it is God, not man, that causes global warming. And now in verses 10 through 21, the Lord is going to reveal to us the last three judgments that will fall upon this world, that will fall upon the kingdom of the Antichrist and change literally the topography of the earth in preparation for God's final confrontation with man at the battle of Armageddon. So let me read the text to you this morning, beginning in Revelation 16, verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his bowl upon the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became darkened, and they gnawed their tongues because of pain, and they blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and they did not repent of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his bowl upon the great river, the Euphrates, and its water was dried up that the way might be prepared for the kings from the east. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet three unclean spirits like frogs, for they are spirits of demons, performing signs which go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them together for the war of the great day of God, the Almighty. Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and keeps his garments, lest he walk about naked and men see his shame. And they gathered them together to the place, which in Hebrew is called har Megeddon. And the seventh angel poured out his bowl upon the air, And a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder. And there was a great earthquake, such as there had not been since man came to be upon the earth. So great an earthquake was it, and so mighty. And the great city was split into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and Babylon the great was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of his fierce wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found, and huge hailstones, about 100 pounds each, came down from heaven upon men, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, because its plague was extremely severe." 
Now keep in mind the context of these final plagues based upon the chronology of the prophetic scriptures. By this time, the church has been translated into heaven in what we would call the rapture. The Russian-Arab alliance of nations have been miraculously destroyed on the mountains of Israel. In the battle of Gog and Magog, as we read in Ezekiel 38 and 39. At that time, the world will recognize the power of the God of Israel. And the Jews will finally be able to build their temple on the Temple Mount, which is currently occupied by the satanic Islamic Dome of the Rock, the most disputed piece of real estate in all of the earth. During this time, the most diabolical leader in the history of the world will arise, and he will offer the world a temporary and pseudo-peace to bring order out of the chaos that has occurred because of the rapturing of the church as well as the defeat of the great red army and the vast forces of Islam. He will, on behalf of a massive European confederacy, negotiate a covenant or a peace-type treaty with Israel. Bear in mind that the world is being prepared for this leader. The prophet Daniel tells us that this Antichrist will be the most intellectually brilliant politician in history. He will be unmatched in his oratory and military skills. The prophet tells us that he will be shrewd and manipulative. He will be deceptive and the most deceitful and convincing religious charlatan ever. In fact, the Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4, he will be the one who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God displaying himself as being God. Now, during the first half of the tribulation, the seal and the trumpet judgments will rain down upon the earth and cause catastrophic destruction and death. And it will be during this season of divine judgment that the Antichrist will coexist with his compadre, the false prophet, who will lead a monolithic, false religious system and use his alleged miracle working abilities to deceive the world into worshiping the Antichrist and wearing his mark. And because of these catastrophic judgments, which will make life on planet Earth very, very difficult, people will demand some kind of a supernatural explanation. And the Antichrist will be there to give them one. So initially, bear in mind that the Antichrist will use the false religious system that he, along with the, the, the false prophet, creates in order to unify the world and give them some understanding of what's going on. And ultimately, he will use this to advance his political agenda. During this time, many people will be saved because of the testimony of the 144,000, because of the two witnesses, because of the angelic uh, preachers that will exist during that time, and many saints, both Jew and Gentile, who will maintain the testimony of Jesus. But also during that time, many, if not most, believers will be martyred. Towards the end of the first half of the tribulation, the Antichrist will fake his death as well as his resurrection, and he will desecrate the temple that the Jews have been allowed to build, and he will then establish himself as God, and at that point he will turn against the false prophet and that false phony religious system and reinvent that religious system whereby people will be expected, indeed demanded, to worship him and him alone. I believe that in many cases, even as we look around the world today, deification seems to be the primary motivation of most politicians. 